Hello everyone. Today I want to cover the use of PowerShell with Microsoft SQL. I'm sure to a lot of you this is nothing new and you've heard of Microsoft pushing very hard on PowerShell to manage basically any Windows component, including the applications on top, such as SharePoint, uh, Microsoft SQL, IIS, the list goes on. Um, so we're going to dive quite, quite quickly into this and look, first of all, Microsoft doesn't replace TSQL with PowerShell. They are actually to be used together. So let's have a quick look at how that might be used in this case. So as an example, I've got a quick query to check my best practices that XP underscore CMD shell is disabled. And I'm going to quickly run it. And you can see my value is 1 if it was enabled and its current value is zero. So I know that this is disabled and it meets the best practice. We don't really want to be using that unless absolutely necessary. Now, as a DBA, if you wanted to check this against an environment and you've got seven or eight servers, this can become quite tedious and boring unless you end up running it through something um, in terms of like a for loop, etc. And PowerShell lets you do that, but it also lets you then take that information and use it in a slightly more constructive way. So let's look at the PowerShell equivalent. Now, this shows quite quickly uh, the PowerShell version is very similar because we just have our instance name. I could use a list of instance names. I've hashed that out for the moment because I'm just using the one. Uh, comment as to what I'm doing at this command. I'm looping through my list of instances, which if I had more here, I would get more. I'm using the try because I want to bracket the whole uh, section on troubleshooting. So if my script goes wrong for any reason or there's an output, I want to see what that is. Then I've got my parameter, which I'm collecting. So I'm collecting the contents of my parameter from the invoke SQL. I've got a nice timeout, I've got a query, and then the query, this is the same statement as I was running before. So basically up until here, this is everything wrapping that DSQL. And then I've got the, the instance that I'm running against. And then I'm going to pipe this out to the host. So I'm going to see it pop over here what the output is. So I'm going to quickly run that. And as you're going to see, well, I don't get a 1 or a 0, do I? I get a system data row. Now, for most of you trying PowerShell for the first time with this, that's what you're going to see, and you're going to be frustrated and go, ah, why am I not getting my data? Well, the answer is because if you look at this, it doesn't come out as just one value. It actually starts with a column header value, and that's why it's coming back as a system data row, because what it's getting is basically that whole table, but in text format. So if we want it to get just the value that's in that column, I've got to add the name of that column. So in this particular case, that's config value. So I'm just going to add config value and run again. Now, the problem here is I can't have that as part of my uh, text, so I'm going to have to take that out. I'm going to go like that. And apart from the config value now being outside of that, I can also see I can actually pre-populate it, because so, it's powerful enough to know that, hey, that's the data I'm getting back. So I can run that, and you can now see my output is zero which is the same value that I get from the SQL Server. Now, going one step further, uh, this is a far more complicated script with many, many, many more checks that I've done. But for the moment, we're just going to focus on the first part of this. So, very similar. I've got my config value. And in this particular case, I'm also piping it into another variable called check. And the reason I want to do that is because later on here, apart from writing to the host, I'm also writing this text into my log output. Now you might be thinking, why would he want to do that? The answer is very simple. I've created a 
CSV file that I want to be able to use in Excel later. So I'm keeping a check, a findings, a server, and a rating. And as part of that, I pipe this text in, then the value on the check, then the server it's coming from, and then the value which I believe is set for the, the security as an example. So I could have an additional row in here and have security and etc. But I'm just going to pipe that out and run it. And you see I go and really got some errors because amongst other things, this is not my uh, desired output, I believe. So I need to check that folder. But I do get the lines to the desktop. So I can see max parallelism is not as I wanted it, which I have here as a, another check with another TSQL statement. So I'm going to change that quickly because clearly the folder path is wrong. So let's just find our user. I'm logged in as admin. So let's just take the admin folder. Because I didn't ask it to create a folder and run again. And you can see I have two values here and I have my CSV. I'm going to quickly edit my CSV. You can see I've got my findings, my checklists and the rest all nicely separated so that when I put this into Excel it will be easy to read. And if I had more instances, so let's say that I had a list of two, three hundred instances, I'd have them all nicely piped out into this file. I would then be able to use it as a single report instead of having to do each one individually and you can also have a lot more checks so, but we're not going to go into that right now